Hello, everybody. What's going on? So I am going to uh, quick evoker guide. I know I said quick on the other video when it comes to, you know, healer tier and all that stuff, but I'm going to try to be quick this time. I'm going to actually try. I'm going to try so hard to be quick and efficient and, and get through it and, you know, try to give some good information without taking up five hours. That's the plan. So to start off, as you can see, I'm on an evoker. Um, I think Evoker right now is probably with without a doubt, I would say the best healer. I, I don't think anyone really thinks otherwise at the moment, whether people think they're close to others or not. I think it's kind of just the best healer right now. It's very strong in all areas. It has really good everything. So it has good damage, healing, it's tanky. It's got good cooldowns. It has good mana. It has a lot of really good mechanics with, you know, CC immunity with Nullifying Shroud. It has a new talent with their hero talents called Temporal Burst when you play Chrono Warden. So whenever you press tip the scales, you get a 30% cooldown reduction, movement speed, and haste buff that decreases over time. So similar to similar to Flow State, which is another talent they have that whenever they cast an Empower spell, they get a haste CDR movement speed buff. They get that now as a passive with their tip the scales as well. So every tip to scales is basically giving them a much more powerful flow state buff that will decrease over time. But basically Evoker, you know, as I just said, they're, they're kind of just good in every aspect right now. They have anything you could ever want with mechanics, mobility, damage, healing. They have CC, they have an interrupt, they're very tanky. They have good cooldowns for themselves and their teammates. They've got burst damage, they've got CDR, they've got it all. So Evoker is... It's one of those classes right now that's just, I would say, very, very powerful, very fun for a lot of people. And I think, I, I will say what makes it fun, even though it, it seems like people just don't like the lizards. I mean, come on, like, look at me, dude. P people don't really like the lizards, but some people do, and that's great for them. It seems like anyone who logs on a dragon, they typically do enjoy playing it, especially Preservation Evoker in PvP, whether it's Battlegrounds, BG Blitz arena shuffle twos threes doesn't matter people just seem to enjoy playing evoker and you know as much as i'm not a fan of getting ran down by by the evoker cleaves and like the the boomkin evoker comps it is fun to play it, it, it's a lot of fun i've i've definitely enjoyed it the last few weeks now playing it basically every day just kind of jumping around and doing battlegrounds farming honor and and kind of blasting people so it's been a ton of fun and uh hopefully you know this this can kind of help people log on it play it enjoy it and give them some information that is beneficial that'd be awesome overall with evoker they're definitely very solid in every aspect in terms of not only what they're capable of doing but also what you know what they bring to the to their comp what they bring to matchups they seem to be able to kind of fit in with everything as well so they're very versatile i would say you can kind of play with everything. You can play wizard comps. You can play, you know, with a melee and a caster. You can play with melee cleaves. You know, you can do well in battlegrounds as well. I think uh, anyone who's watched the stream, you know, we've we've done a lot of BGs, and you know, it is it is random BGs, but there's definitely moments every single BG, every single stream where, you know, you can see me playing Evoker, and I'm I'm quite literally healing myself against five, six, seven DPS. Which I think, you know, obviously, you know, different skill levels and whatnot are involved. But if you if you play BG Blitz and, and all these things, it's definitely going to be something that you see a lot and is very common with Evoker, I think. They are a class that they're just kind of hard to bring down. They can kite a lot. They have a lot of of spells to kind of rotate through with, the, with their cooldowns, with a wall, renewing blaze, rewind is a good CD. They have time dilation to slow down damage. So I definitely think Evoker is just really crazy to play right now and you know if, if you're going to watch this video and, and play an evoker and take advantage of it while it's good you are more than welcome so let's kind of get into it i think overall you know get to the basics of it all stats you know stats and talents so similar to last season or similar to, to dragonflight mastery is just kind of your most kind of most of your your healing increase out of all the stats you can get so Kind of gives you the most healing. So basically what it does is anytime you are healing allies, your healing is increased if their health is lower than yours. So if you have a teammate that is, you know, BG, if they're in a BG or in an arena, 
whatever the case may be, you're healing an ally. If they are 70% health and you are 80% health, you're going to heal them for more because of your mastery. If they are 80% health and you're 70% health, then you're not going to heal them, you know, as much as you could because you aren't going to be benefiting from that mastery. So another thing to note is that mastery is always beneficial for yourself, I believe. So definitely pretty easy to kind of heal yourself up and and make sure you're you're always kind of topped off before healing others. It's it's pretty simple, I would say, on Evoker, which we'll get into in a moment. But overall, you want to go some versatility, try to stack a, a good amount of mastery, and then trying to get a good amount of haste as well. You know, these are all subjective terms, I would say. A good amount. I think this first season stats are going to be really low for everybody. So I think you can maybe get to definitely around 10% haste or so, which would be decent. Having flow state as well now too is it's going to help in this first season because you aren't going to feel the lack of haste the same way you would if we didn't have this talent uh, for this first season. So first season is definitely going to be low on, on your off stats, but uh, on your secondary stats. But I think overall you can definitely get a good amount of each and evoker is just going to be it's, it's going to feel very fluid without a doubt moving on to your talents i think right now there's two hero talents so we saw with war within that hero talents were added into the game hero talents are basically just a they're they're a new talent tree that you get every single option it's a bunch of passive talents while also giving you choice nodes where you can you i think each tree has three or four choice choice nodes and you can pick between you know for Evoker, for Chrono Warden, you have a talent that makes your hover a warp. So your hover turns into a blink with the talent above. And then the choice node you have is whenever you do decide to blink or use your hover, whenever you warp, you get a damage reduction and it fades over three seconds. Or you can pick it so your hover, your warp, will basically just give a movement speed buff to allies who come in contact with with the, the trail that it leaves behind. So... That's kind of what every choice note is. You just have a couple different options. We can see down here, you know, you have a, a new passive as well with your, it's called Threads of Fate, which basically gives duplicated damage or healing. It's a buff onto your teammate. After you press tip the scales, you get a very powerful flow state buff, essentially. And if you cast an empower spell, you can apply a damage or healing buff to your team, a damage and healing buff to your team that basically just replicates damage and healing so in the choice node below it you can either choose between extending it one second at a time by casting essence spells or you can choose a talent that makes it so every empower spell you cast you reduce the cd of that spell by two seconds depending on what your empower was so i can't really tell which one i prefer i definitely think instability matrix is solid overall just because you're always kind of getting higher in power fire breaths. So you're trying to cast higher empowered fire breaths and higher empowered spirit blooms. You don't really cast higher empowered dream breaths, but you still get two seconds off with that cooldown. So not the worst thing. I do think master destiny is decent as well, though, just because you can, you know, keep your buff applied, but that's basically your option for that note as well. Just to kind of give you uh give you an idea of what the choice nodes are about. A lot of these talents we can, I'm going to try to go over a couple that are really important. So first of all, your living flame is basically a better version. So you have chrono flame, chrono flame makes it so within the last five seconds, the damage and healing that you've done is that you've done is replicated onto your target when you living flame them. So if you damage an enemy, as you see here, or damage an enemy, you can see that that chrono flame does a minimum amount. And if I spam damage, so I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a disintegrate here, and then I'm gonna cast another living flame, and I'm gonna do a little bit more with my chrono flame. So my first chrono flame hit for about forty eight thousand. My second one, because I did some damage first, hit for one hundred twenty thousand. So anytime you're getting damage out on Evoker, you're basically having additional burst if you can somehow weave in living flames, which is very strong. Um, a lot of these talents, you know, you can see are kind of just some of them are tier set passives that they had previously in Dragonflight that are now hero talents. So the Spirit Bloom Hot is now a hero talent. Every time you Spirit Bloom, 
your target, they get healed for 30% over eight seconds of that heal. They have another talent where that also buffs Spirit Bloom. So Spirit Bloom is basically a lot stronger than it was before. It was always used not as often as you would think uh, in PvP. It was kind of just your burst heal. You know, your Dream Breath was sustained. You had Living Flames and Instant Living Flames, and you would cast them with your your Verdant Embrace buff um, with your Ancient Flame buff from casting Verdant Embrace, so it's a faster cast. And those were kind of tools you used for burst healing as well. And if you ever needed to have that additional burst or just you didn't have the the instant cast or the, the fast cast Living Flames, then you're able to usually cast the Spirit Bloom. So Spirit Bloom was, was kind of your safety net before in terms of burst healing. And now you have Spirit Bloom with two benefits to it. And it's it's definitely a lot stronger now in this expansion, I would say, because you have a hot tied to it. And then you also have a talent that makes it so you get haste. So 3% haste up to each hot from Spirit Bloom. So every healing over time buff that you, that you get from Spirit Bloom gives you 3% haste up to 9%. So if you're in an arena, you Spirit Bloom three people, or let's say you echo yourself, and then you spirit bloom two other people, then you are you're going to get a nine percent haste buff. So it definitely makes spirit bloom a lot more important, I would say, in your rotation um, and kind of a buff that you can keep track of and keep up to give yourself more stats or more haste. So huge talent there. And then what I think is the most important talent that we've we've touched upon briefly, you know, during the streams, and also a talent that I think is probably why Evoker feels so crazy is after image so after image is another tier set bonus that they turn into a talent uh for their chrono warden hero talents this talent is insane all this does is it just shoots out free living flames and then people die or you shoot out living flames and people get healed to full health so you know let's see if i can uh drop some drop some hp real quick hopefully this jump doesn't doesn't take me out let's see Oh my goodness, I actually almost died. That would have been crazy. So I'm going to Spirit Bloom myself. And then I also give myself a Living Flame on top of that. So every time I Spirit Bloom or Dream Breath, you're going to Spirit, you're going to Living Flame your, your allies as well. And then, like I said, if you Fire Breath, then you Fire Breath, then you're going to Living Flame enemies. So pretty ridiculous talent that I think is a uh, part of the reason that Evoker is kind of this strong. Because if anyone remembers from Dragonflight, this tier set... This talent, this bonus was nerfed. So this bonus had an effectiveness nerf, which means that whenever you did cast an empower, whenever you actually casted an empower spell, you didn't get a full benefit. You didn't get a full strength living flame. You would get a living flame that was, you know, 70%, 60% weaker. But now in War Within, this talent is at full effectiveness. So every single time you're living flaming or dream breath or spirit bloom, you're casting max power living flames or for chrono warden chrono flames and i think that's why you know you can see here i'm gonna i'm gonna press a nice tip the scales fire breath you can see how much damage it does so i'm gonna reset the details here and i'm at three hundred five thousand damage and if i press my ns fire breath my tip the scales fire breath right here did four million damage my living flame did 1.2 so at 5.2 5.2 million and then Chrono Flame, which is the extra damage from your Living Flame, did about 700,000. So with one Tip the Scales Fire Breath on three targets, you're able to do almost 6 million damage on Evoker, which is ridiculous, ridiculous damage. So once again, I think that's part of the reason that Evoker right now is so crazy. Your talent tree outside of your hero talents are pretty much the same as they were in Dragonflight. You know, you can see here on the left side, we have Double Wall. We have... You know, Ancient Flame, we have Sleepwalk, we have Renewing Blaze, stamina, the Stamina Talent, we have the Magic Damage Reduction Talent, exu Exuberance, which is just movement speed when you're higher HP, oppressive, war, oppressive Roar, we go down the tree, we get a stun from Deep Breath. So overall, your talents don't really change too much. Uh, your class talents are the same as well. You know, you have one point here in Dream Breath to keep, just to have extra healing. I do think you're able to kind of swap talents around. I'm not really sure what you would swap for something like low spirit bloom. So lower spirit bloom CD could be used potentially. And if you're going to do a swap like that town wise, I would probably say that if you're not too worried about 
you know, losing a little bit of living of a fire breath damage, or you're not worried about getting the maximum amount of purges because let's say you're not against a team that has a lot of buffs, then I would definitely think opting out of the font of magic talent into lower CD spirit bloom is an option. Uh, but overall, your talents are pretty much the same. I'm going to try to have uh, the talent link in the description for the video as well. But, you know, as you can see, your talents are pretty much the same as they were in Dragonflight. I think Chrono Warden is easily the best hero talent that you could pick. Flame Shaper just doesn't have the tools that Chrono Warden does, I would say, with, you know, the warp for hover. So hover turns into a blink with the extra CDR that you get, the extra cooldown reduction you get whenever you press tip the scales, the damage and healing buff that you apply to your teammate after you press tip the scales, um, you know, the the um, the instant healing and instant damage that you get whenever you cast an empower spell as well. So a lot of these passives I think are just too strong with Chrono Warden, especially in a PvP setting. I think they're very, very good and it's, it's kind of hard to pass up on them. You know, now moving on to your healing, um, similar to the videos that I did in Dragonflight, I'm going to be pretty quick with, with kind of how you do your healing. The healing rotation on Dragon is not too difficult, uh, so I'll try to keep it uh, keep it easy and, and make sure it's understandable for a lot of people. You basically have five healing spells. I think that's all you have. No, six. So you have six healing spells on Dragon. Five technically. One of them is a... One of them is kind of a... Uh, it, it's not necessarily a huge heal, but it is your modifier. So... It's your your modifier, your setup, you know, burst spell, um, which is Echo. So Evoker basically kind of revolves around, they, they revolve around keeping up two things mainly. So a lot of your healing on Evoker, a lot of your sustained healing, I should say, and kind of your, your hots on Evoker are two spells. So you have Reversion, which is a healing over time effect, and you have Dream Breath, which is a instant heal and it does more healing it does more instant healing depending on the empower and then it does a healing over time effect as well so typically what you'll do on evoker is you'll try to keep up two stacks of reversion whenever you whenever you're healing a target or you know you have a main target to heal if you have enough echoes and reversions to keep on other people then you definitely can but you can spend those echoes and reversions on other targets as well but your main target you typically want to have two reversions and two dream breaths. Now, what I mean by that is Echo, the you know modifier setup spell that I was talking about is basically what it does is it does a small heal. It has a small initial heal and it adds a buff to your teammate. It adds a buff to your ally. And the next spell that you press is going to duplicate or Echo onto that ally. So. What's really cool about Evoker, I will admit, is you're able to echo other targets and apply other healing spells to them without targeting them. So, you know, you have a spell like Reversion where, you know, you can see I'm going to echo the training dummy and then I'm going to Reversion myself. So now we both have a Reversion. So the nice thing about Reversion, which we'll touch up on super quickly, is they have a talent called Grace Period. Grace Period is just a healing increase on targets with your Reversion. And because of Echo you're able to have two applications of this. So if I echo this, if I echo the train dummy and then I press reversion, they have two stacks, two applications of reversion, which means they're getting double the benefit of the grace period talent. So they have much more increased healing than they would obviously if they had one. The nice thing about echo as well, when it comes to reversion specifically is a talent called golden hour. So golden hour, what it does similar to your chrono flame talent with your hero talents, for a Chrono Warden, it applies an instant heal based on the damage that they've taken in the last five seconds. So, if you take a lot of damage, if your target is taking a lot of damage and you echo and you reversion, you get two applications of that instant heal with Golden Hour. So, a good way to get burst healing if you don't have Verdant Embrace or you don't have Spear Bloom. Definitely a solid option if you're if you're kind of out of out of healing spells or maybe you can't get casting casting spells off that is very very helpful especially if you're taking a ton of damage and you're kind of trying to kite while using instance evoker healing is pretty simple i would say it seems a bit funky at first i think a lot of that just has to deal with you know the lizards and it's being it's a new class but overall your healing on evoker isn't too complicated 
the main things you're going to want to do are keep up two stacks of reversion on your main target or you know as much as many reversions as you can get on your team if you can get two on your two on your main target and then one on yourself one on one on another target you know if you can get multiple out in a bg by echoing someone reversioning someone else echoing another person reversioning someone else and kind of spreading that that hot on your team then that's great uh, in an arena setting you typically want to have two stacks on your main target at all times so that they're receiving not only the healing from the hot but an additional buff to your healing so evoker is pretty pretty simple in that regard of how you want to have your your hots and if you can keep that up and be efficient with that then you're going to notice a drastic increase in your healing um especially if you're new and you're you're kind of trying to you know get more living flames out or maybe you think you have to cast a lot if you can keep up your two stacks of reversion two stacks of dream breath then things are golden so like i said you get two stacks of reversion and then your instant heal your bigger you know burst heals is verdant embrace so verdant embrace is a leap to your target and it heals them and it'll apply a healing buff called life bind that basically heals you an amount of uh, 40 percent of the amount of healing that you're doing to other targets so basically a lot of your healing on evoker a lot of your burst healing comes in this short window of you know getting a verdant embrace on your target echoing them and then getting a dream breath on them as well so now they have two stacks of dream breath two stacks of reversion and they have a large amount of sustained healing and at this point you know the best thing to kind of do is when you already have your buffs up unless you're taking a lot of burst damage and you're getting the echo into a reversion a lot of the time you can kind of use living flames you can spirit bloom your target which will apply the hot now from your new talent you can press verdant embrace when it comes off cooldown echo and then you can get another burst heal with living flame so the options you have a few different options basically every time you're healing on dragon you're trying to make sure that if you're able to you're getting echoes on top of your other spells so echo is you know like i said it's kind of your setup your setup like modifier heal and a lot of the time that you're getting burst healing out it is with the use of echo so you echo you press living flame you can echo and verdant embrace you can echo and spirit bloom for a burst healing you can echo and dream breath which is very important because of your because it just stacks a second hot and dream breath has a huge healing over time effect in your breakdown and that's pretty much it in terms of your hots so your hots are dream breath and reversion outside of that your burst healing is your verdant embrace your spirit bloom and your living flame combined with an echo one thing that's really nifty about echo that we talked about that i mentioned earlier is you can use echo a few different ways you can use it on yourself and then heal a teammate so you get the heal you can use it on a teammate and heal yourself so they, they get the heal as well and that works with a couple of different things so let's say you're let's say you're in a position where you don't want to leap onto the enemy right so verdant embrace obviously leaps on verdant embrace obviously leaps you onto your teammate and let's say you're you're in a position you know let's say you're in an arena or you're in a bg and you want to heal an ally but you don't want to jump into the fight what's nice about echo is you can simply echo your teammate and then you can verdant embrace yourself because verdant embrace can be used on yourself even though it is a leap heal it only leaps if you're obviously healing somebody else but you can still use that ability on yourself so what's nice about it is like i said you can echo a target and if you don't want to be in the fight you know let's say you already have your hots up let's say you already have your your versions you already have your dream breath up and you want to get another heal on them before you want to get another heal on them so you can get your life bind up but you don't want to be in the fight what's nice about it is you can just echo and then you verdant embrace and you verdant embrace yourself now that teammate has the heal from verdant embrace and they get the life bind buff and you can just stay max range or stay away from from the big fight so pretty nice things that you can do with echo another thing that i talked about earlier when it comes to putting up reversion is if you are in a bg you can echo other people and then use healing spells to kind of to put more hots onto them um the nice part about echo as well is it doesn't only have one buff and what i mean by that is you can apply the buff to multiple people at the same time you can't it's not something that only can be applied to one person at a time so you know i can echo myself i can echo the training dummy i can echo you know this guy where, where's this guy going 
I can echo this guy. He's uh, looks like he's a guardian. I can echo him. So echo is really nice and for the fact that you can use it on multiple people. You don't have only one application that you can have up at a time. And that is very, very helpful when it comes to kind of spreading your healing out in BGs and in arena. And also another, another nice little trick when you're trying to get multiple stacks of life bind. So if you want multiple applications of life bind, that's another way you can do it because life bind will always apply to yourself. So life bind, life bind is the buff that you, that you get when you Verdant embrace that shares healing. And the nice part about life bind is it always will apply to yourself if you fly to a target. So what is great about it is let's say you're in a, let's say you're in an arena setting and your whole team is kind of in trouble. All three of you are, are low HP. What you can do, what you can do is you can, what you can do is you can life bind somebody or life bind your, your third member, life bind one of your allies, and then you can burn and breach to your teammate. And now your teammate, now your initial, your main target has the life bind buff with the Verdant Embrace. Your off target has the life bind buff and you also have it because it always applies to you. Um, so a few things that you can do with Echo, like I said, that are really, really nice and kind of helps spread your healing. And if you can get into a nice rhythm, which obviously just takes a lot of practice, just takes time, you know, muscle memory and kind of building good habits. But if you can get into a nice rhythm and, and flow with Echo, you'll notice that the healing on Dragon is quite simple and it makes it so it flows very well. And that's when you can start weaving in damage. That's when you can weave in, you know, getting CC, you know, let's say you, you get a big echo on, you get an echo on your teammate, your version them, you echo a different teammate or you echo yourself for healing for the burst healing. Then you burn embrace your teammate. And all of a sudden everyone's high HP because you have your hots out already. Boom. You can go for CC. You can go for a sleep. You can try to focus on kicks. You can try to focus on damage, but being able to kind of be being able to feel comfortable with the echoes and and keeping up double hots of reversion double hots of dream breath will allow you to feel a lot more free i would say in how you're playing the class when it comes to your damage damage is pretty straightforward you have an azure you have an instant spell that cleaves which is called azure strike it does a small amount of damage it applies to slow with your passive in your class tree you have the living flame that is a cast that gets a cast time buff whenever you press Verdant Embrace with the talent called Ancient Flame. You have a, another damage spell called Fire Breath, which is obviously your big kind of wombo combo purge spell that also will launch additional Living Flames to your target. And then your final damage spell is your Disintegrate. Now, Disintegrate is a channeled spell. It costs Essence, though. So typically... You want to be careful with how many times you want to press disintegrate. If you're going to press it because let's say you don't want to cast or let's say you get interrupt interrupted on a different spell. You know, you get interrupted on your fire breath, you get interrupted on your living flame, but you still want to do damage. Disintegrate is an option, but a big thing to worry about is the fact that it does cost a lot of essence and essence is the, the resource required for your echo. So Oftentimes what people will do and it's kind of a it's kind of a rookie mistake and you know Sometimes people at the higher levels do it as well Is they'll get too comfortable with getting disintegrates out and then now they're behind because they can't press echo They're out of essence for several seconds and now they're just in a position where they can't get the extra hots Or they can't get the extra the double heal on their teammates, but overall your damage is pretty Straightforward I would say a lot of your bursts right now from dragon comes from getting the fire breaths out so getting a, you know, you get a fire breath out that applies a living flame and then you can cast another living flame after. Sometimes you get an essence burst proc, which makes your essence spells free and then you can disintegrate them and everything on dragon kind of, like I said, just, it just flows very well. Once you get into the rhythm of, I would say kind of like a checklist of, okay, did I get my hots up? You know, I got. Did I get my double reversion? I did. Okay. Did I get my double dream breath? I did. Okay. Are we full HP? Yes. What do I do? I cast the fire breath. Now when I cast the fire breath, I have a flow state buff. Uh, you know, you can get an essence burst from your, you can get an essence burst from your temporal compression, which is nice. Uh, if you're playing spark of insight, you can get an essence burst from the living flames that proc from your talent. And now you're in a position where 
you know, you can cast a living flame or you can cast a disintegrate and kind of get that damage out without worrying too much about your teammates because your hots are so powerful on dragon and your living flame or sorry, your fire breath rather heals as well with this talent here called life givers flame. So like I said, once you kind of get into the flow of keeping up your, your two stacks of reversion, your two stacks of dream breath, and you're, you're making sure, you know, to, to get that additional burst healing with your, with your spirit bloom, or you're getting living flame procs onto your teammates. Once you're kind of comfortable with that, the damage uh, feels so much easier to do because unlike other healers, I would say a lot of dragon healing is not only is it very high sustain, but they have a lot of burst healing that kind of allows them to, you know, get a heal off and then damage, like go for damage. And then because you already got a huge burst heal off and you have hots up, you can continue to kind of stay aggressive in that regard, which is really, really nice about dragon. I would say now when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, battlegrounds or arenas, a huge thing is openers, which we've talked about in my, in my dragonfly video, everyone has an opener, so to speak, you know, DPS have one, whether it's, you know, you run in, you pop your cooldowns, you have your, your damage rotation that you do. Every class kind of has an opener, including healers. So the opener for evoker, I would say is pretty simple. It all comes down to reversions. Like I said before, you know, you know, let's say the gates open or, you know, you're getting ready to engage in a, at a big team fight in a BG blitz or a battleground. The biggest thing I would say is just trying to get reversions out. So with arena, it's pretty simple. Your main target, you can echo them. You can reversion. You can target yourself or your other teammate if you're playing 3v3 or shuffle and you can echo them and then reversion yourself or them so that they have two stacks as well or reversion yourself so that you have one and they have one as well and now you have multiple reversions out so already off the bat you have four reversions typically on evoker the the standard opener i would say for your healing is you're going to verdant embrace and then you're going to echo and then you're going to dream breath so that now you have two stacks of your huge hot and you have your reversions up I think with the addition of the spirit bloom hot and the haste buff from your hero talents that that could also be one of your next one of your next kind of healing rotation spells so typically like i said you're going to echo or sorry you're going to verdant embrace you echo you dream breath now you have four hots up you have two reversions you have two dream breaths but now you know let's say your target's still taking a ton of damage you can either you know echo and you can living flame or you can living flame if you have a pro if you have an instant cast proc and kind of just get that get that out of the way and use that quickly or what you can do is you can try to get an echo into a spirit bloom for extra burst healing and the haste and the hot on your teammates so now you have five healing over time effects on them so the opener obviously it kind of depends it's very situational but the biggest thing about the opener is going to be getting reversions out because reversion is a huge hot it does a lot of healing and it also gives you a healing buff so that's pretty much the most important thing about it and i think if you can get comfortable with making sure that you're keeping up that talent or keeping up that healing over time effect on your allies everything will be a lot easier to understand which you know i said that a few times in this video but that's what it's really about it's really about repetition repetition is kind of key to it all you know you're not going to be good at something if you're not continuously doing it or you know trying and failing and trying and failing or trying and getting better so when it comes to dragon that's pretty much it on your on your healing you know you keep up your double reversions you try to make sure that you keep up double dream breath on your main target you can echo your with the addition of the spirit bloom hot and the haste you can echo your main target or echo a bunch of allies in a BG. And then it's what's really nice about it, like I said, with Verdant Embrace is if you have multiple echoes out, but everyone's kind of far away or, you know, people are out of line of sight, what you can do is you can just spear bloom yourself. So what's really nice is, you know, you can echo like I did this PVP dummy. I can run out of line. I can spear bloom myself. And now the target that was out of line because they have echo, they still receive that healing. Um, so a nice little trick there, nice little tip i would say for anyone playing dragon echo doesn't require line of sight if the buff is on them so if you're out of range or out of line of sight but echo is on your echo is on an ally and then you spirit bloom yourself like i showed already you're going to apply that spirit bloom to them as well so 
pretty nice for something like battlegrounds especially where everyone's kind of you know there's a lot of chaos everyone's kind of far away from each other you know maybe people are in in the room in warson gulch and you're in the tunnel or people are on the roof and you're you know on the on the ramp who knows everyone's kind of scattered around you're not really in position to heal everyone but you have multiple echoes out on them already or you're trying to you know hover or warp warp around and spread echoes before you can apply that heal and it's very simple because you can just spirit bloom yourself so a lot of things you can really do a lot of things you can do with echo that are really nice i would say and that would be one of them that'd be the main one i would say is is very very nice about it you know anyone who's watched the stream or watch me do a lot of bgs and do a lot of uh, a lot of random battlegrounds on my dragon you can see me constantly going through each frame echoing them reversioning someone else you know echoing more people getting a spear bloom out echoing more people getting a verdant embrace out to get the life bind onto you know four targets five targets and that's kind of a a, a nice way to not only have great hps but kind of make sure that you're healing everyone without sacrificing your positioning and, you know, chasing everyone around the map. So Echo is a very, very nice spell for that and very fun to use because of because of those little little nifty tricks, I would say. But like I said, this this is I'm, I'm trying to keep this a very short and sweet, very quick and, and easy guide to understand. Uh, so hopefully with amongst the rambling, it's it's helpful and, and educational for for a lot of you. Um, the last thing I want to talk about real quick is compositions for arena. So battlegrounds, not really sure on that. If you play BG blitz, you obviously can't pick your composition, but for arena two V two, three V three, the compositions you can play are obviously very, very important Two V two arena. I would say evoker can play with anything three V three arena evoker can play with anything. Um, and that'll be the video. Thank you all for watching. I'm kidding. Uh, so two V two, Typically, 2v2 is really good for a lot of healers that play with melee. So you can play with melee or hunters, typically, I would say. Evoker, I'm not sure what your best 2v2 partner would be. I think Fury Warrior is really solid right now. I think that Hunter got buffed in some ways, and Hunter is typically pretty insane in 2v2 arena as well. So Evoker Hunter could work, whether it's Marksman or Survival or BM uh, or Beast Mastery. Um... But typically melee, so like hunters and melee classes do well. So with Evoker right now, I would say your best 2v2 comps, if I had to guess, would probably be either a Death Knight, so an Unholy Death Knight, or a Fury Warrior. I think Arms Warrior could do well to, can do well also, but I would definitely say that Unholy DK and Fury Warrior are probably your best 2v2 classes. Um, Arms Warrior, Assassination Rogue could do well as could could do well also. But for the most part, melee are kind of where it's at in 2v2, um, especially with a class like Evoker. I think they fit well because of their CC and their mobility that they can help the melee with, but also the damage that they bring. Um, and also the fact that Evoker is kind of just a healer that's always in the fight, which obviously if you're playing with a melee class, that's great for you. Um, when it comes to 3v3 arena, it's all kind of up in the air right now. You no, know, people are still trying to figure out the meta. People are still trying to figure out what exactly the best comps are. I think I think right off the bat, if I had to play something on Dragon and try to start the season out on a good note, I would say similar to 2v2. I think Fury Warrior and Death Knight are key. So I think with a Dragon, you can play with a Death Knight and you know, you could play with an unholy death knight and a fear warrior or an arms warrior. You can play with an unholy death knight and potentially an affliction lock. You can play with an, an unholy death knight and a windwalker monk or a demon hunter. Um, I would say the best comps that you could play right now on evoker would definitely be some combination of, you know, fury warrior or warrior and affliction lock warrior and a mage. I think that you could play Death Knight with a Warrior, Death Knight with a Windwalker Monk. Um, so Cleaves are going to be very, very powerful. And I think that, you know, if you want to kind of get a, a nice start to the season, I would definitely suggest playing a Cleave. I think there's no issue with playing a melee caster composition or a double caster composition, playing something with Wizards. But if I was playing Dragon and I was starting off the season, without a doubt, I think to just have the most fun, I would probably play 
with a Fury Warrior and an Unholy Death Knight. So Unholy Death Knight, Fury Warrior with me on a Preservation Evoker. That is definitely the comp that I would play if I was just playing for fun, trying to have make the most of the first day of the season or make the most of the, the start to the season. You know, I would try to find, hopefully have my friends re-roll to that or, you know, try to find those classes in LFG. But that would definitely be my suggestion. I think Evoker with a Unholy DK and an Arms Warrior or sorry a fury warrior would be a great composition right now and that's pretty much it so i think overall evoker can do really well with melee but evoker right now with how powerful they are don't feel limited don't feel like you need to find a dk you need to find a fury warrior to to be successful evoker is very very strong and very versatile and they can pretty much play with anything so those are definitely my suggestions and that's gonna be it. I know I did a lot of rambling. I try to keep it quick. I think, let's see, what's our recorded time? 46 minutes, holy shit. I, I don't know how I do this. I, 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 can't, I can't stop rambling, but hopefully this video was helpful and, and educational for a lot of you. And I, I do appreciate the support as always. And I'll see you when I see you.